Voila. G'day everyone, I'm Adam. Welcome to Flip My Ride. Now before we get to the video proper, I just would like to throw it out there and kindly ask if you like what I do at Flip My Ride, there is now a super thanks tab down towards the comments section where you can click on it and just throw a few bucks my way to help donate towards the channel, help me keep the channel going, help me build the channel hopefully and grow it to something big and beautiful. So yeah, um, just thought I'd throw that out. Don't like asking, but every dollar helps. If you want to keep rescuing cars like this, let's get into it. Today's episode, I want to introduce you to one of my flips that is about to get underway. It is a 1984 Subaru four-wheel drive <coughs> touring wagon. It's a lot of words, isn't it? Before I start tearing it down and <coughs> reviving and resuscitating it and restoring it as best I can, I thought I'd take you, walk you through it to show you what it currently looks like, what its warts and all are, the problems with it, what I may need to address in the process of rescuing it and getting it back out on the road to a new owner. Let's have a quick once over on the car. Now the worst thing about the interior, it's all there but it's just yellowed out I call it. It's, it's sun bleached and sun baked. So if we have a look at the steering wheel you can see it's no longer the grey blue colour. It's That could be dirt as well. Same with the door cards. Again it could be just dirt. That probably needs a repaint. The door handles are rotten. This is all eaten away so we might have to sand that and look at getting some paint. Retro 80s uh, parcel shelf, knobs and dials, pretty pretty okay for the era I guess. The roof liner is excellent. I purchased this car through Gray's online auctions. I bought a number of cars through there. It was, it was listed with rust corrosion, bad. So I thought, oh, I'm, I was looking at another car so I went and had a look at this while I was there. Upon inspection, the rust was not bad at all. It's just where it's exposed on some of the seams, it started to rust, but it surfaced at worst. This is the area of concern it had in the advertisement. That again is just surface. Hopefully underneath the plastics, it's not too bad. I think it's okay. See the carpets as well, this is what I'm talking about with the staining. It's all brown. Again, just a little bit here, it's not too bad. Now here's the boot, I'll show you that. Hang on, let's turn the camera around. So this is the boot problem. Again, the corrosion they're talking about is here. But that just needs a clean in the paint. Underneath, fine, look at that. So that's all good. And we need new gas struts, they're fucked. Hey, whoop, there we go, see? This side's good, this door feels like it's never been used. Same with this door. That's all neat and tidy down there. The trim here is all, that could be just dirt on that door over there, most likely. A couple of things that I really love and find unique about this car is the fact that in the 80s, uh, most, if you look at my Hilux, most four-wheel drives you needed to have to manually lock the hub. You'd engage the transfer case and then manually lock the hub. Whereas this, you just pull a lever. Just pull it up and it's in low range and high range. Very easy, very simple. I think Subaru were one of the first to incorporate that. Pull, four wheel drive. Pull again, low. No four wheel drive, four wheel drive high, four wheel drive low. Easy as that. The other thing is this moon roof in the back here. The fact they put it in the rear of the wagon and the wagon even has a nice little bulge here, which helps with the styling. Um, the fact they put it in the back was for the passenger. Now, most modern cars do the panoramic or moonroof in their large SUVs and four-wheel drive. So, again, this was ahead of the game. Well under-tired for the guards, very small wheels. Clearance is probably not greatest for four-wheel driving. Let's think about a car like the Volvo XC70 with its flared plastic guards. This had it in the 80s. Now. It's faded a little bit here and there, and we've got some issues with some of the decals. 
we have a look under the bonnet, we can see where they were referring to the corrosion again. See here? It's not rusty holes or anything. It just needs a rust treatment, a cleanup, a rust treatment, and a bit of paint. Now, originally these cars came out in the 70s, uh, early 72, 73, something like that. Um, they were in the US known as a Leone. I don't, I'm not sure if we really got a lot of it here in Australia back then. They were a very sharp, angular looking car, very nice looking car. Then in about 76 in the first gen, they introduced four wheel drive and uh, continued that through into the second generation, which is what the current car is that I'm sitting in, the 984 model, is generation two. And every one of those models came with four wheel drive. To say these are, well look, the first model was nice and, and, and it was attractive. Uh, they tried to round that out a little bit, I think, in this generation. Uh, and I don't think they did the best of jobs. I mean, it's no ugly duckling, but it ain't no swan either. So it, it lacks a little bit of, well, in the day I'd say it, it lacked a little bit of um, what it had in the first generation. But with time and age comes retro cool. And I think now it's pretty much accepted as a, a rare and cool, unique car. That's why I bought it. Now, I chose this because you don't see them. You see the Brumby Utes. So we called these in the ute form, or the pickup, a Brumby. In the States, they're a brat. The car itself is fully complete. It's original everywhere. The radio, uh, nothing's missing. The dash ain't cracked. The seats are in really good condition. Um, I'm, I'm super happy with what it is. I think it's a bit of a find, to be honest. Just get a bit of power up this hill. I don't know why I do this route, but... Um, Everything struggles up this hill. This is its first real drive, me doing the lap, so uh, it hasn't had much road time with me. You're coming with me on the first real long drive. Just from the first drive, I mean, I drove it home, obviously, but that was only a 10 minute, 15 minute drive. Uh, sitting here doing laps in it, I can tell you the gears crunch, third crunches. So we're going to look at that, we need to address that I'd say, and we might have to do a bit of a, an old trick and throw some automatic transmission fluid in that. The um, dash is digital, but it's missing the actual speedometer part. It, it works, it's very faint. When you're driving, it disappears, so don't know why that's the case. Needs a good detail inside and a clean. Um, I've got to address the rust which isn't going to be too hard. It's a clean, a treatment, and a paint. Brakes need adjusting too. They're a bit spongy and low. Clutch is a little high. Um, that might need more fluid as well. This is an EA, I think it's an EA81 engine. Uh, 1.8, barely any kilowatts. We've got a busted boot down here that we're going to have to fix. That looks like the original bloody tire. Have a look at that. We've gone and done new tires already because it, it was pretty bad and we've painted the rims up. That's the only thing we've actually done. I think one of the first jobs is gonna be tint removal. There's also a few little dents. We've got this. Someone has tried to push the door in here or here, with their hip. Yeah, it's just here. It's hard to see, but someone's done a bit of, a bit of this. We've got another little one here. The bonnet's got a little mark. I love that, I really love that. I would have hoped to have bought it for under two. <laughs> Dreaming. So yeah, we um, hope we can get it up to some kind of standard that attracts someone with a bit of nostalgia. That tends to be how it works. Now, I don't know, the ute versions of these in Australia, the pickups, I've seen them listed for $30,000. Am I going to get 30 k for this? No. But an all original 1984 Subaru for a fanboy, that's going to... Um, I think it's going to draw some attention. Subarus are almost like a cult following, and most people who get into Subies, they're always with Subies. It's in their blood. I'm hoping I can find someone through this rescue and reviving who grew up with one, uh, maybe now drives a nice new WRX, and they remember mum and dad having one of these, or their auntie or uncle used to take them on summer holidays. I don't know. So let me know in the comments what your thoughts are. Did I buy a shit box? Do you think we scored? What do you reckon? Let me know.
All right, I'm going home. We're going to tear into it. Oh, and it smells like cat piss. I forgot to mention that. Always a smell when you buy a car. And most of the time, it's these stupid things here. People put on sheepskin and think it's like a magic potion. Never have to clean them. Just hides everything. They don't. Yep, cat piss. Let the games begin.